Hey, what's up? This is Reed. If you want to compare smart light switches, you've come to the right place. I tested many light switches that are surprisingly very different from each other. I separated the light switches into three categories to make it easier to compare. At the end of each category, I'll share my favorite. If you want more info, I'll put the 10 pages of notes I took while making this video in a summarized article that you can reference after this video. All right, let's look at the first category, inexpensive Wi-Fi switches. These two are from Treat Life. One is an on-off switch and the other is a dimmer. Both have an LED light to help find it in the dark and this cannot be disabled. But the on-off button on the dimmer switch was small and at the bottom. If you were not careful, you could accidentally hit the lowest dimming setting when turning on the light. The middle of the switch with the LED lights is touch sensitive to control the dimming. This made it easy and quick to use. The lights do not fade on or off, but they do revert to the last dimming level when turned on. Most switches do this, but a few don't, which I'll mention later. They use the Smart Life app and there are not many settings you can change. Also, the lights did not flicker, but if they do for you, there are three different modes to help fix it. The switch was made out of a lot of plastic, and the holes did not line up perfectly with the standard light switch cover. You might not notice it though. Besides that, the dimmer was accurate and seemed to work well. The next two are from GoSund, and I ran into a few issues with these. First, as you can see, there is not a light switch plate cover installed. That's because the holes on these switches are not threaded, so I could not attach a standard faceplate. They do come with their own faceplates, but it cannot be used next to another switch. The other issue I ran into was neither one would work with my five LED kitchen can lights. They both worked on single lights though. I really like the actual switch design more than treat life. The button to turn on and off the dimmer switch was bigger. Plus it had a really satisfying click to it. These also use a smart life app. However, it did not have the anti flicker mode like the treat life switches had. The next ones are from Casa, which are very popular. I've been using the on off switch for my front porch light for a while and it's worked great. I purchased the dimmer switch and out of the box it seems much higher quality than Treat Life or GoSund, especially having more metal on the switch. The dimmer buttons are up top and it's a little more intuitive. It also makes the on off switch easy to hit without accidentally pressing the dimming buttons. But you cannot change the brightness as quickly. You can set the minimum brightness to 1% and there was a little bit of light flickering at that level, so you can move up the minimum brightness to fix it. Where the Casa dimmer switch really stands out is the extra settings. The lights can slowly fade on or off and you can adjust it. Also you can set what a double or long press will do. For example, a double press could slowly turn off the lights as you walk away, or since the lights turn on to the last dimming level, you could set it so a long press goes to 100% brightness which is convenient. Out of the inexpensive Wi-Fi dimmer switches, I like the Casa one the best. It's compatible with smart things and it feels really high quality for the low price. Before moving on to the next category, I'm throwing in one more switch from Meros? 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 I don't know. It's not a dimmer switch, but it's HomeKit compatible and worked well. This also has an Android app, so you can use both apps at the same time. It has a very minimalist look, and the little LED indicator light can be turned off unlike the other Wi-Fi switches I've shown so far. It worked well, and if you're in the market for an inexpensive HomeKit switch, it's worth checking out. The next category is switches that need a hub to be smart, and people like these for increased reliability. The first one is a Z-Wave switch from GE. Since it uses Z-Wave, you'll need a hub like SmartThings or Hubitat. It looks very similar to a regular wall switch. You press up on the switch to turn on the light, press down to turn off the light, very simple, and easy to press when walking by. To change the brightness, you hold it down, which is not as intuitive. When the light switch is turned on or off, the lights fade. This cannot be adjusted though. The lights did not flicker even down to 1%. The light switch is good at what it does, but there are not any bells and whistles on it like some of the others I'll show you. Next is an on off switch and a double switch from Zeus. This on off switch is not ordinary though. Sure, you can have it control light as you would expect with one press up or down, but you can also have it control smart lights and devices with multiple presses. They call it scene control. So I have it turn on some smart light strips with a double press up, which is pretty awesome. The double switch has a dimmer on top and a relay button on the bottom. You could have the button turn a fan on or off. You could also use the button to control other smart lights as well, with many different combinations of press and holds. You can get really creative. Just make sure to write it all down in the old smart home manual. The dimmer worked well with the lights not flickering, even down to 1% brightness. 
There is a fade on and off that can be adjusted in the settings, as well as many other options. The dimmer switch had a softer click, but I still liked it, and both were easy to use when walking by fast. The next set of Z-Way switches are similar, but are from Innovelli. You can also control smart lights with double pressing on the switch, but this is only for the red series, whereas all the Zoo switches support scene control. You can even use the little button in the top corner to control lights as well. There's a really cool looking LED light going down the side of the switch that changes with the brightness. The LED color is customizable. You can also use it for notifications. The Innovelli Red Switch can also measure energy consumption, which sets it apart from Zoos. The dimmer brightness and percentage levels were a little miscalibrated for me. The lights turn off at around 35% brightness and from 75 to 100%, it looked very similar. This also happened when using the physical switch. I'm not sure if I set something up wrong because there are so many settings you can change with the switch, which is actually great for flexibility. It's also one of the few light switches that work without a neutral wire, but it's recommended to use one if you have it. If your house does not have neutral wires, Lutron has been the go-to for a long time. Lutron Caseta does not use Z-Wave, but instead uses their own bridge. I have it controlling my pendant lights because the three-way light switch box did not have a neutral wire. For the three-way light switch, you actually use a battery-powered Pico remote. These Pico remotes can be placed on a counter, which can be very convenient to control the lights. The buttons do not have a great click to them and are positioned close together, making it difficult to hit the right button in the dark. When turning on the switch, it will always go to full brightness, no matter what the brightness was set to before. The lights will also fade on quickly and off at a slower rate. The fade speed cannot be changed. Lutron Caseta has been very popular because it's possibly the most reliable smart switch out there and compatible with almost every platform. From the Lutron Caseta app, you cannot have the switches control other smart light bulbs and many of the other fancy features of Zeus and Innovelli, but the app is very easy to use. Now, what is my favorite smart light switch that uses a hub? I would say it's a tie between Zeus, Innovelli, and Lutron. I know, I'm the worst, but they're all really good. However, if I had to pick, I would choose Lutron for the majority of light switches for a long-term reliability. Then mix in Zeus or Innovelli for rooms that have a lot of smart lights in them. Zeus did slightly work better for me than Innovelli, but they are both great switches. I'll be leaving up all three of them in my kitchen area to keep testing and using them in future videos. So make sure you're subscribed to find out how well they work long term. The last category is high-end switches, which all use Wi-Fi. They cost more, but they have some extra features. The Ecobee Switch Plus is up first and it does not have a dimmer switch. What's unique about this is the sensors for motion, light, and temperature, and the Amazon Assistant built in. I've used this switch for years and I've run into some issues. The Amazon Assistant wasn't as useful as I thought it would be, and even though this switch is compatible with SmartThings, the motion sensor is not. However, it still works well with HomeKit and all of the sensors are available. So I would only consider this switch if you wanted some extra sensors to work with HomeKit. Next is a new switch from Oro. What's unique about this is that it has a touch screen and it fits in a regular light switch plate. You can dim the lights with the screen. There's also a clickable button on top and bottom to turn the light on and off. This worked well and was easy to press even when walking by but when turned on, it does not return to the last brightness level. There's a motion sensor on it that can automate the lights, also a light sensor to adjust the brightness. The lights fade off slowly and on quickly, and this cannot be adjusted. You can connect other devices to the switch. I connected my Ecobee thermostat and Hue lights. You can also connect it to an August lock and doorbell. If you have another Oro, you could use it as an intercom. It also has an onboard Amazon Assistant. However, the app crashes when trying to enable it on my phone. Again, this is still very new, so I'm sure they'll be improving it in the future. It can be controlled by SmartThings, and you can turn on a SmartThings scene from the switch. The screen was very warm to the touch. I also found the screen a little too small to want to use it all the time, but it's impressive for its small footprint. The next one is Brilliant, which has a big screen and a big price tag. It's about the size of a phone, so it's easy to use. Because of the size, it does not work next to other switches like Oro does. So you have to buy one that fits the size of your light switch box, and it can get pricey. However, the Brilliant can do it all. Seriously, almost anything you can imagine. If I remember right, it took that majestic picture of my dog Luna with its onboard camera. Okay, it didn't do that. But it does have a camera. 
This might be surprising, but it's really useful as a video intercom or to check on things when you're gone. There is a privacy cover, so that's good. Brilliant has a motion sensor for the lights. It can control your thermostat, view a doorbell feed, unlock your door, and control smart lights from LifeX, Hue, TP-Link, and SmartThings. The sliders can control physical lights connected to it, or you can change them to control smart lights instead. You can change the fade on or off from the screen, and almost all the settings can be done right from the screen, which is very convenient. You can quickly select scenes from the home screen, and it's very family friendly. The only weakness of Brilliant is using the sliders can be difficult. Sometimes trying to turn the light on will turn it on and off really fast and it's frustrating. If you're looking for a high-end switch, the Brilliant is still my favorite. Even though it costs a lot of money, it really is a control panel right there on your wall. They push out updates every two weeks and it definitely feels like you're getting a premium product. Hopefully this video helped you make a decision or at least see what else is out there. And if you want to compare more specs, the article is linked below. I included the top smart light switches I could find. And if you feel like I missed out on any, let me know down in the comments so I know what to test for a future comparison. This video was a lot of work, and I have even more intense smart home content coming soon, so make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. I give you corn mode. Can we be done? No, Dad, more! Should have never set that light switch like that. <laughs>